My name is Old School Nerd. How you doing, guys? It is Sunday, and um, got a big live stream coming up today. Um, got some grocery shopping to do later. Not that that has anything to do with all you guys, but um, I got to get my day started right. So, when you want to get your day started right, go to the requests. Berserker King Reviews, and if you have not been to his channel, you need to go to his channel. You've never seen a more devastatingly hostile looking guy with the most smooth, soothing, calming voice do um, reviews of TV shows, movies, and music in a Viking man cave. No, you haven't, and you need to go see it. All right, but let's. this is not about him at the moment. It's about this. Okay, hey, old school nerd. You need some more battle music in your life. Fact. Um, please react to Orbit Culture of the Shadowing. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming in. My name is Old School Nerd. Like and subscribe to the channel. Please uh, give a thumb up to the uh, channel if you like what you see and you like what you hear. Also, um, remember, Sabaton is historically accurate. I am historically not. So never forget that, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, please go to oldschoolnerd.com. Check us out there. We got all of our social media posts, including the new Facebook page. That's all on you. You guys asked for it. I put it up there. Um, check us. Uh, check out the Patreon link, which, by the way, uh, later today in the live stream, I'm going to be addressing and talking about uh, my Patreon family um, specifically on something I want to talk to you all about, what your thoughts are. And uh, go to the merchandise store. Got a couple new shirts, including how incredibly mistakeful I am in my reactions. So I'm going to get my beard out of the way because um, you do not want to get in the way of, uh, of Orbit Culture. I've reacted to one of their videos. It was a live studio uh, performance. So we're going to do the shadowing in the same way. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I, I love watching these guys live. As much as I would love the imagery of a music video, as a musician, I love to see people play their music. Just kind of my thing. So let's do this. Oh, <laughs> battle music. It's, it's 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, um, for those of you who remember my first Orbit Culture reaction, some of the, because we're back in the same studio, let's also remember um, the members of Orbit Culture are here, here, over here, and Jason Momoa's uh, badass drumming brother is right here. He's kind of a cross between Jason Momoa and the lead guitarist of Sub 41, if you look at him. He, he does. That's what he looks like. And he has one of the most incredible smiles. If he gets to smile in this video, it melts your heart. It really touches you here. Another thing you'll notice about Orbit Culture's uh, live studio performances, there's always a member, somebody who's not a band member, aimlessly filming them and wandering into shots. Why? Because they're doing it live. At least this person this time is wearing black like the other members of the band. If you remember the last video, it looked like <laughs> it looked like somebody from 100 Thieves gaming house walking around wearing all white just aimlessly walking around. You know, a 6 foot tall white boy wearing all white just aimlessly walking around all these heavy metal <laughs> masters of death and destruction. He's like, "I'm just filming stuff, bro." At least she's wearing black and blending in. Good for her. By the way, to the, to the woman filming, nice chucks. Huh? Okay, uh, two things real quick. Uh, number one, best part about Orbit Culture is 
you could pick the playlist gym playlist uh going outside and working in the garden or cutting grass doing any type of work that are definitely on the playlist for everyday life um not i wouldn't i don't know if i put them in the car playlist like i said we're trying not to get into accidents and get speeding tickets but that's all on you uh number two i'm actually getting to a second thing um love this guy's drum setup uh i love to talk about drum setups because again this is like the fifth or sixth one in a row where we get away from that classic metal uh toms up and angled symbols wrapped around you like you're you know Alex Van Halen, you know, or, <laughs> but very utilitarian jazz style setup. I keep saying jazz style because that's originally that Buddy Rich style is what you're seeing. And the reason why I refer to Buddy Rich is when you're talking about these heavy metal drummers in the current metal, uh, it's no longer, heavy metal is no longer about big stadium beats. Boom, bah, boom, boom. It's more like, it's, synchronization layering um rapid fills yet still have a place um drums have a tendency now to no longer just hit you in the chest as part of an arena rock or stadium rock metal venue like they were back in the 80s um and and 90s now it's um bands like Go gojira you know mashuga orbit culture these bands are still that classic heavy metal sound. But at the same time, the drums are no longer just there to counterbeat and make loud noise. Now they're just as intricate to the development of the storytelling and the arrangement as anything else. And to do that, you have to be able to be fast, precise, and dynamic. Hence, the Buddy Rich jazz style setup where everything is low, level, and lean. Um, he's got... Oh, his crashes and splashes. He's got multiple um, hold crashes, an inverted splash, his rides over here, hi-hat, um, floor tom, mid tom. I don't know. I think he has a tom above the snare, but I can't see it from this angle. But we all know what I'm really looking for, and it's right here inverted. Here's the Zilbel. <sighs> Zilbel. Yeah, I'm going to have to make a, uh, a punch, uh, punch key for my... Uh, uh, stream deck because we know that I have this one you are so dumb you are really dumb for real which a lot of you will say I don't use enough because it's it's true and then we also have this one what the fuck Richard uh, because sometimes that needs to be said I think I need to make one for Zilbel Zilbel you know just you know because <sighs> I think I, I think I have a problem what do you guys think? Do I have a Zilbel problem? I think I have a Zilbel problem. <laughs> it's not a bad problem to have. I could watch that guy play the drums all day long, straight up. I think the reason why I brought up Gojira and Mashuga when I was describing Orbit Culture is because I see a lot of similarities between all three. 
Gojira is that storytelling, yet extremely heavy metal. But the lead singer uh, of Gojira has the ability to melodically take you into a complex theme, like Amazonia. And, you know, we were born for one thing, you know. But when you're talking about Meshuga, you're talking about the ultimate layering of the heaviest of the heavy metal um, with dynamic drumming and on a pace and like a runaway freight train with three freaking train engines, right? It's just whoa. To me, and this is me, tell me if you agree in the comments, if you kind of catch this. Doesn't Orbit Culture kind of sit between the two? Where they can, where the lead singer can tell a story, where he can come out with his vocal ability and do the aggressive Meshuggah growling aggressiveness in your face because obviously musicianship wise they can do it but at the same time they can be dynamic in storytelling like Gojira so they kind of balance both styles now there are many many other bands luckily for us we have YouTube that we can see and discover them all and that's where all of you come in to tell me where to go but when I see Orbit culture, and I'm listening to them and watching them play. I kind of get a feel of both the sugar's aggressiveness and the breakneck speed of their level of master metal. And then you have Gojira, which is also like a master metal band, but also a great storyteller. You know what the funny thing about it is? It took me almost two months to even check out Orbit culture. Y'all got to keep me from doing that shit. When you guys have a really good band for me to keep, y'all need to just keep, keep messaging me. Dude, I need to say, you need to do this. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Because I need to start trusting you guys a little bit more. See? This is some Gojira stuff right here, right? God, this is all so good. I love his guitar too. Kind of reminds you kind of like a dime bag guitar, but it's not. Good morning. <laughs> How do you say good morning? Oh, like like this. Okay. Um, I love this band. Um, as I was listening to this transition, a thought entered my mind, and I have this question for you. It's not really a question. It's pretty much a statement. How amazing would it be to go to a music festival and be told, like, like a, like a walk-in, Let's say you're just going to a Vakken, right? With a double stage setup. Okay? 
Orbit Culture comes out, plays a set. Meshuggah comes out, plays a set. Then Gojira comes out and plays a set. How good of a day are you having? And how close to having a heart attack would you be? <laughs> oh, Orbit Culture. Oh, you're killing me. In the best possible way. <laughs> They're so good.